Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're getting rid of Chef Mike. Rid of Chef Mike, yeah! And we're gonna start doing some real cooking. And there's nothing I wanted to do more than what I grew up on eating, which of course is. That's right, it's pizza time. The secret to every great pizza is a great dough. And to make ours, we're gonna start by blooming our yeast. To do this, we're gonna take one tablespoon of sugar and add it to two and a quarter cups of warm water. Then we'll take one teaspoon of our active dry yeast and mix that all together. This process is gonna to check to make sure that our yeast is alive and well, and that it'll give us a really nice airy texture to our pizza. When I finally left New Jersey and moved down to Texas, I was blown away by how good the food was. I'm talking burgers, barbecue, donuts, valley tacos, Bucky's. It was all incredible, but the Italian food on the other hand was disappointing to say the least. So this recipe was kind of a quick way to cure some of that homesickness I had when I first got here. Now we can see our yeast bloomed up nicely and we can move on to our next steps. All we're going to do is add two tablespoons of olive oil and a tablespoon of salt before mixing everything together. Now we're going to go ahead and add our three cups of bread flour. The higher protein in this flour is going to give our pizza a much better structure and a lot more bite. Now it's time for our special ingredient. Two cups of semolina flour. I love this stuff. I think it gives the dough a really nice color and a great texture, but I understand it can be hard to find depending on where you're at. When I was making this recipe, my supermarket was actually totally sold out of semolina flour, probably because we're still in the middle of a pandemic and in the middle of Texas, but I called up like six different pizza places until I finally found one that was willing to give me some flour. They had me pull around back like we were conducting some illegal Italian food deal. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's totally okay if you can't find semolina flour. All you need to do is use two more cups of the bread flour we used earlier and you'll still end up with a totally delicious pizza. Regardless of which flour you use, our next step is going to be to mix this all together as best as we can to kind of get into a workable shape. As you're mixing, if you feel the dough is still a little bit too wet, go ahead and sprinkle any additional flour you think you need to get it into a workable point. Eventually, after a couple minutes, we're ready to move onto the table and start folding it there. At this point, we're going to start folding the dough on top of itself until we can get to a point where we can stretch out the edges of the dough without it tearing. After a couple minutes of this forearm workout, we can see that our dough is almost ready. All we need is a couple more folds and our dough should look something like this. This amount of dough yields me four 12 inch pies. So what we're gonna do now is split all of our pizza dough into four pieces. We're gonna start by creating two equal halves. I don't have any exact measurements for this. I just kind of weigh the balls in my hand and transfer over dough when I think it's needed. Once we're satisfied with that, all we're gonna do is repeat the same thing to each half and we're gonna end up with four nice equal pieces. To store them, I'm just gonna go get my Ziploc bags and grease the inside with a little bit of olive oil and put each ball in there individually. Now we're gonna take these to the fridge and let them rise for at least 24 hours. The dough will stay good for up to two weeks in the fridge and three weeks in the freezer, so feel free to make this ahead of time. Now, I don't have an oven here, but with a little movie magic, we can take care of that right away, so. Sweet. So we're gonna go ahead and set our oven as high as it can go, which for me is 550. While the oven's getting hot, you also wanna warm up your cooking surface as well. I use a cast iron skillet or pan just like this one and get an awesome crust every time. I know there's a big debate between which is better, a pizza steel or a pizza stone, but as a college student, they're both too limited and too expensive for what I need. For me, versatility is critical, and I can do way more with a cast iron and still get a great pizza from it. Sweet, now with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started on our sauce. I'm gonna start with one can of San Marzano tomatoes. I really prefer the taste of these tomatoes and they can be found in almost every supermarket. With those added to the bowl, we're gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of tomato paste and then two tablespoons of some sugar. Now don't worry about making this too sweet. All the sugar is gonna do is cut back on the acidity of the sauce. After that, we'll add a good sized tablespoon of kosher salt and a generous amount of oregano. I understand if you're upset there's not exact measurements, but I season this to taste. 
If that's not your style, I really encourage you just to use this as a template to experiment off of. By playing around and kind of having fun, you're bound to find something you really love. Next up, I'm going to add three cloves of fresh garlic that I minced up, as well as a few turns of black pepper. Following that, we're going to add two tablespoons of our olive oil, and then we're going to crush up our tomatoes with a fork, as well as mix all our ingredients together. Around this point, I start tasting my sauce to see if there's anything I want to add, or if there's anything the sauce really needs to come together. After I tried this, I realized I left out a really important ingredient, and that's going to be basil. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up some fresh basil here, and just sprinkle that in. Now that that sauce is out of the way, we're going to start stretching our dough. This is actually a pizza I made earlier, but I wanted to show you guys the technique, and it's just kind of fun to toss around pizza. I'm starting off by just working the air in our dough out towards the edges. That way we kind of start to form our crust. Once I'm happy with where that's at, I use the backs of my knuckles to pick up the pizza and start letting gravity stretch it. And then when I'm comfortable, I give it a little toss. The centrifugal force is supposed to yield a rounder pizza, but honestly I just do it because it's fun. I mean, who doesn't want to throw some dough around? And just like that, after a couple throws, our dough is going to be ready to go in the oven. When it comes to the sauce, I think a little goes a long way. If you love a saucy pizza, go for it, but I think I get the best result when I only use a moderate amount of sauce. I don't have an exact measurement, of course, but the saying I always go by is, more than you think, but less than you hope. Right after that, I do a layer of Parmesan cheese. Whenever I order a pizza out, I can always tell right away if it's missing this, and just a little goes a long way. Then comes a layer of mozzarella cheese. The best results come from low moisture, whole milk mozzarella. The whole milk version packs way more flavor than the skim, and it's honestly not that hard to find anymore. Walmart always carries a great value brand version of it, and I was able to find this brand behind my deli counter. Now this pizza is ready for the oven. If you notice I was building this on cardboard, that's because that's how I'm going to transfer it to the oven. At this point in my life, I can't justify spending $40 on a pizza wheel, and this cardboard works just fine. Now don't walk away because this pizza is going to cook extremely fast. Out of every pizza I made that day, they all cooked in under 10 minutes, and Keeping an eye on it is the difference between having burnt crust and a delicious pizza. Now it's time to pop this pizza out of the oven and see how it came out. And now, welcome to the kitchen, my good friend and the only person I know within 200 miles that owns an oven, Michael Perkins. Hey. All right, let's try some pizza. Okay, tap. Oh yeah, tap. Hot. <laughs> it's hot. What do you think? I think it's really good, the consistency, the crunchiness, you know, mm -hmm. all the way through the actual pizza. And then as soon as I bite into mm -hmm. the pizza, I get the splash of just marinara sauce. <laughs> it's a perfect balance between marinara sauce and cheese, you know? Yeah, totally. So that's, that's what I, my take on it. I think it's pretty good. So. For reference, uh, what like would be your most go common pizza place you've gone to? Mm -hmm. Definitely better than Domino's, Pizza Hut, so Little Caesars. Are you saying we out pizza the hut? We out pizza the hut. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed. This pizza is my like number one comfort food. Uh, it's as close to pizza as I can get, like real authentic pizza from back home. So I really hope you enjoy. Take some time, try out the pizza, you know, get some friends together, mix some dough around, and you know, give it your best shot. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe. That's it. End the video. No, hey, end the video. It's over.